In this video, I'm going to talk about the one thing that I wish somebody told me when I started my online business. And had I known this, I probably would have an email list that is 10 times bigger than the one that I have today. When you have your online business, it could be really overwhelming to learn everything. You have to learn how to get customers. You have to learn not just how to get clients online, how to serve your clients, especially as you're growing and developing a scalable process or a scalable product, how to keep your clients, but also you have to learn all of the things with marketing, such as a landing page, the thing called a funnel, building an email list, as well as marketing yourself on social media so that you can continue to get those clients or so that you don't have to always depend on referrals for the rest of your life. The learning curve is massive and there's a lot of gurus out there that would want you to think otherwise. And what I have found is just like riding a bicycle or just like mastering anything, when there's a lot of skills involved, it's really good to focus on one particular thing at a time and then putting it all together, learning the machine. If not, if I take someone that's just starting, I try to teach them how to market themselves on social media. I try to teach them how to serve their clients. I try to teach them also how to build their funnel and create a free asset that people actually want. It may seem overwhelming. And then when things become overwhelming, people are just less likely to do the activities required of them. And if they're less likely to do the activities and it just feels treacherous, you're less likely to stick with it. And that leads to a business owner that's either miserable, overwhelmed, or someone who just quits on their business and goes back to a job. My goal with this video is to break down the big vision of where your online business should be headed, but also the most practical path of least resistance that I have seen work, not just for myself, but for several other clients over and over again. And so as service-based business owners, one of the things that we have to understand when we look at the data is that the number one predictor of profitability and this is backed up by studies done by Kajabi when they analyzed tens of thousands of online businesses. The number one predictor of profitability and growth, bar none, more than anything else, more than the number of customers you have, more than the price of what you charge, more than the price of your offer, more than how many offers you have, was the growth of your email list. Which means that the more your private email list grows, the more potential you have to earn in your online business. So the big vision, the overarching goal of any online business, one of the metrics should be to consistently build your email list. This is something that's not really taught and this is something that's not really taught well. And this is something that I'm going to be teaching and talking about because more people need to know this and more people need to understand the skills required to do this. There are so many people that come to me that are coaches or consultants. Maybe they've been coaches and consultants for 10 years, or maybe they've just been a professional and started their business three years ago, whatever, that do not have an email list. And that breaks my heart. And I think the reason is, is because they get stuck in the weeds of one-on-one -on -one clients and they don't understand that, again, the number one predictor of profitability and growth for any online business is the growth of the size of the email list. And when you get stuck in the day-to-day, -day, it could be hard if you don't have that vision. So the first step here is just to understand that ultimately as an online business owner or as someone in business, you want to grow your email list. Now that doesn't mean that that's the priority today. That just means that that's the ultimate goal. And that also doesn't mean that you run out and change a million things today. We know that that's the ultimate goal. We could look at what are the skills required to be successful when it comes to building an email list. Just like if I were to put out a vision for myself and say, my speaking skills or my ability to speak directly influences the company, what are the things that I can do to improve this skill? Or my ability to go to networking events and build relationships really will directly influence the company. What skills can I work on that are under the umbrella of building relationships that 
I can start to understand this mechanism and prepare to implement this skill. I think where a lot of business owners go wrong is that they go from zero to a hundred. So they go to the NFL without ever playing football before in their life because they don't understand the skills required to play in that game. So let's break down the skills required to build an email list. The first one is one that no one that I've seen really talks about, especially in the context of building an email list, because what you'll usually hear is you need this thing called a landing page. And a landing page is just think about a page on the internet where you put your name and your email. And when you put your name and your email in there, you get something for free. That thing could be an ebook, that thing could be a masterclass, that thing could be a free physical book, whatever. But the one thing that people don't really focus on is the reason why you put your email inside of that page to begin with, which is you want that thing. Whenever I put my email and password into a page, it's because I am interested in that thing. I want that thing. I want it to be delivered to me and I want it more than I want to withhold my name and my information. And where a lot of people go wrong with their email list building strategy is that they don't know their audience. They don't know necessarily what their people would want. And if they're brand new in business, they don't have enough insight or even data to figure that out. Now, where people have a little bit of an advantage is if you are an experienced coach or consultant and you've seen hundreds of clients and you have internal data to back up what people want. What does that mean? You can look at everyone that's ever paid you. You can look at the people that have paid you the most with the least resistance. And you could look at the first problem that you help them solve. So let's say that in my case, that is both connected to LinkedIn and video. Using that data, I could have a free asset to help people learn LinkedIn video, which I do through masterclasses. So I understand what people want from me because I have the data. But if you're brand new, unless you have proven information that people have paid you this for that, it's very hard to build that thing because you don't even know who's going to actually pay you. A lot of these programs that tell you how to create an avatar, that's la la land where you could have a certain idea of who you think would pay you. But at the end of the day, that person that actually pays you may be very different than what you imagined your avatar to be. Fortnite was not designed for 35 year old men. Call of Duty was not designed for 10 year old boys. So at the end of the day, the market decides. And what I have found to be a great starting point for someone that doesn't have a landing page or a website, doesn't have a freebie, or doesn't have one that has worked, is that they start on social. And why is that? That's because if I have a client post on LinkedIn for 90 days, do newsletters, do live events, what are we gathering? We're gathering data we have at least 90 points of data in each of the mediums of content. So let's say over 90 days, they do eight LinkedIn lives over 90 days. They do 12 LinkedIn articles, LinkedIn newsletter editions. They do so many videos. What do we have? We have a good idea of what people engage with the most and want the most from our clients. Not only that, when they actually get clients, we have data as to, oh, this person, these three people, this live event wasn't the most viewed or the most engaged with, but while I was live, three people booked a consultation and one person became a B2B client. That's an estimated value of 50 to a hundred grand in the next quarter. So then if their goal would be to get more clients like that person, we would just look at the topic of the live. We would prioritize creating a free asset around that thing that has evidence and that has already been proven to work. Now, when we go to create a landing page with the email and the name, we're not guessing in the wind. We know that this works. We know that this has gotten clients. We know that this is what the right people for this right offer want from us. Now that's just the first step. 
And that's where the value of social can come in. And a lot of that is knowing 90% of this is just having the right free offer and not just for clickbait, but actually having a free offer that is 10 times better than competitors, which is really the second step which is you don't want to see to copy, but you want to see to get inspired and you want to just get a baseline of what's out there. And I'll give a very simple example. So if I was a kid and I was doing lemonade stands and there were three other people that were doing lemonade stands in the town, I'd want to taste their lemonade. I'd want to see how they're doing it, how they're treating customers, like all of that. And that's what you're going to do in the second step is look at the three biggest people in your space. What are they doing? And they're doing it for a reason. You also during this phase want to match skills. So if I'm someone that doesn't ever want to go live on video, doesn't ever want to do webinars, doesn't ever want to film courses, doesn't ever want to do YouTube, I would not use me as a model because the process that I implement with clients and the process that I have done is a process that is video heavy, is a process where a lot of people that come to us, even though they don't like the idea of video, they know that they should master it for their businesses because that will just increase the probability of success happening for their businesses in the long term. They want to do webinars, they want to do courses, all of that. So if you're just someone that wants to stay behind the scenes, if you're just someone that wants to do text posts, you should probably look at someone that's big in the space that uses that model. If you're someone that doesn't want to be involved with clients at all, I'm also not the person to model because I don't just send you to an on-demand course. We have live cohorts and we also offer one-on-one -on -one support within the cohorts so that results matter to us versus somebody giving me $100 while I sleep and whatever, not ever watching a course. But if you want something more hands off, then that's fine. But you would want to model a course landing page, a person who their first thing on their landing page is a course. The first step is to know what your audience wants. The second step is to really understand what's out there, get a baseline, go through the process, look at their asset, what could be different, what could be better, where could you fill gaps? make your thing 10 times better and be sure to use a model that matches your skill set and the way that you want to build your business again if you never want to be on video you should probably not ever listen to me and then the third step would be making the thing again matching your skill set so if you're great on video maybe you create a video an on-demand webinar maybe you do a live master class there are so many things that you could do with a video, or maybe you do the video because that's your natural energy. And then you have somebody turn it into an ebook that you attach with the video, however you want to do it. If you're a natural writer, maybe that's starting with an ebook. Once you have that set up, the question is, what are they going to get after? And where is that bigger vision going to lead them to? Because it's not just, hey, put in your first name, put in your email, come to the masterclass or download the video or download the ebook and then Austin La Pasta never see you again. You obviously want that to lead them to consultations, to however it is that you sell. And you want it to be so good. You want the free thing to be so good that they are interested in the things that they can pay you for. The last thing that you want is an experience where I download your free thing, it's trash, and then you've just potentially lost me as a high ticket client because I know you put zero effort into the free thing and how you do one thing is how you do everything. And that's just how people's logical flows kind of go. So the first skill is really to know your audience, know what they want. The second skill is to really know the model that you're going to choose. The third skill is to create something that's 10 times better than anything out there for free. The fourth skill is where are you going to lead them to? What are you going to send them? How often? And obviously within this is you need to know what that looks like. You need to know how you usually speak to clients, to your audience, what tone of voice. Do they like to read a lot? Do they like shorter ones? And you can test with the emails. You're obviously going to have some sort of writing skills. If not, if audio is your preferred thing, 
maybe you just do emails that lead to an audio podcast. But again, the models usually highlight what works and then you add your flavor and your flair and your personality and always just have your audience in mind. But you never just want to not have a vision of where you're going to lead them to. And where you're going to lead them to has to also make sense. So if you opt in for something like, oh, learn LinkedIn live video. If I then send you to a carpentry masterclass, that's weird. It just has nothing to do with it. But there are direct and indirect cousins, I'd say, of the main thing that if I know my audience, I could send you to. So you join my list and then maybe I also break down the tech, a StreamYard masterclass, a Riverside masterclass, a Restream masterclass. These things aren't LinkedIn, but they're tools that support LinkedIn live video. Maybe I talk about the best cameras, or maybe I interview three influencers and we look at their video setups. Maybe I do a masterclass on how you can create long form videos without an editor or without ever hiring an editor. There are things that if you know your audience, you could lead them to that are similar. They don't always have to be the same. Or I could just have a sequence where it's like almost every day is a tip or something related directly to LinkedIn live video. And that really depends on the progression of where you see your business going. Again, internally, that's a reflection of the questions that clients are asking you because the questions should determine your offers and then we're getting into a little bit higher level. But the reason why we would go more towards cousins is because now people are asking about YouTube. People are asking about these things in general. They don't just want LinkedIn. Although they do want to grow on LinkedIn, a lot of these things are related and connected to that. The second to final skill is how are you going to get people to this page? And a lot of people that teach email how to build your list or whatever, they are doing it maybe through random DMing or ads. And I think that LinkedIn has the tools and the features where you don't need to do ads to build your email list and where you can segment certain audiences that will automatically be more interested in whatever your free thing is. And the way that we would do this and the way that I do this with clients is through the LinkedIn newsletter and through LinkedIn live events. And the reason why this is so powerful is because if I launch a LinkedIn newsletter and the LinkedIn newsletter is called live video strategies for business or live video tips for entrepreneurs, why would you subscribe if you're not an entrepreneur or you don't see yourself becoming one? And if you're not interested in doing live video, so just by default, those people are going to be more likely to opt in to a 10 ways to dominate LinkedIn live video ebook or a live video masterclass than random people that I message on LinkedIn. So we're starting with a population where they have a higher likelihood to opt in, which means that you get more emails with less messages, which is important. So that's number one. Number two, the same thing with the live events. If I have a live event and it says live video strategies for entrepreneurs to get clients on LinkedIn, if I so happen to also have an ebook with the same title, why would you not want that if you literally just revealed interest in learning about this particular thing? If I had a 10 steps to be a better carpenter and I offered that to the same people that attended this event, it wouldn't match. So. LinkedIn is a great place because through segmentation, you could have up to five different newsletters. So segmenting five different interests and you could have different live events as often as you want. You could segment certain audiences and anyone on LinkedIn through these two strategies could build their email list by at least a hundred people each month without even a landing page. Because if you have a great thing, I could have a LinkedIn live or an audio or just message the people that are on my LinkedIn newsletter. And if it's similar, I could say, Hey, don't know if you missed the event or did you want the free ebook with literally the same title as the LinkedIn newsletter or the live video event. Most of them will say yes. And then you could say, awesome. What's the best email to send it to? So before you even launch your actual funnel, all the things you could start with a hundred emails after just one month of doing this. And you don't even need a big network. 
that will give you a reason to be excited when you upload those hundred emails into something like a Kajabi or a Thinkific or just whatever platform, which I'll do another video on all of that. But the point is, is that you don't have to have all the fancy things to start today. Another thing to note is that starting with something like a LinkedIn newsletter, not just for the data, but for the practice, because it also gets sent as an email. So you're getting pretty good insight as practicing your skills with sending email, seeing how it looks, because you can see how your newsletters look in the email format seeing which emails get you the most requests for your free asset or for your consultation. And it's just a great testing ground to practice the skills required so that when you do have those hundred emails, you've had a little practice, you have insights to create your free asset. And so when you get something like a Kajabi, it doesn't feel like you have no idea what you're doing and that you're going into something completely over your head and completely blind. And that is my spiel on the importance of building your email list and the five skills required to do that as an online business owner. And I hope that this gave you some perspective. Hopefully it paints a bigger vision and a picture and a process that you can start to double down on because building your list is very important. And of course, all of the things that you do on social should accelerate your list. And if over a year you built a list of a couple of thousand people, I want you to understand the financial security, especially if those people are the right people, especially because they're coming from LinkedIn where they're decision makers, they have more income and more education and they have better connections and all of that. But I want you to understand that if you were to build an email list of 2000 to 5000 people within a year, your financial security is almost secured if they're the right people and you know what you're doing. Because with just one email, you could get a consultation, you could sell a course, you could launch a program, you can have people on your webinar, you can sell your book and become a bestseller. Everything becomes easier again, backed by data when you do this. I know that we're in Q2 now and you may not be in the place to put all these things together, but you could start with this process that I shared with you and you can understand the importance of getting these clients, bringing in profitability in your business and learning this machine, creating a free asset that is better than anything else out there in your space. Because long-term that email list is your financial security. And in fact, when many business owners go to sell their business or whatever one day, the value of the email list is usually more than the value of anything else in the business. It's data and it opens doors. It also puts you in a position where you never have to depend on social in your life ever again where you could potentially just get paid sponsorships for people to be exposed on your email list. There's so many things that could happen, so many doors that could open. LinkedIn is a great testing ground to start to get the insights. And I hope that this opened your eyes. Ciao.